Good morning, Marmy. Welcome back to Mom Boss of Three. So in today's video, I'm doing something a little bit different and chatting with you guys all about how I prepare my kids to go to school for the first time. So I know that it's like the beginning of the summer holidays and kids are gonna be ready to go back to school in the fall. And so for parents whose kids are going to school for the very first time, it can be a very stressful and anxiety filled time for them to help get their kids ready to be as independent as possible come September. And so I thought because this is what I'm going through in my own life, I would share some of the tips and things that I've learned in the process of getting my kids ready for school. So if you don't know, I've got three kids. My youngest is starting school in September. And so all these things are in full force right now in my house. And so I wanted to share with you guys some of the things that I do to help my kids be ready for school. And also I should say, for those of you who don't know, I do come from a rehab background and so helping people prepare for their daily routines or helping people make accommodations or you know figuring out solutions as to how to be successful with their daily routines was part of my job, albeit with adults. I've been able to apply a lot of those ideas to the work I do with my kids and helping them get ready for school. All right guys, so let's get right into it. So when it comes to preparing for school, I think a lot of parents, myself included, when it was my first child going to school, I was sort of hung up on like, do they know their alphabet? Can they write their name? And all those kinds of things. But I think when you're preparing your child to go to kindergarten or preschool for the first time, really what you should be focusing on is helping your child be independent in three main areas. So that is like washroom and toileting. The second is dressing and undressing. And the third is feeding. So these I think are the three main areas where kids should be as independent as possible before starting school. When it comes to things like like learning the alphabet and everything else, those things are gonna, gonna come over time. And I think that any kindergarten teacher will tell you they're gonna learn that while they're here or they will learn that over time. And it's more about the independence and them being on their own with their teacher, with you away from them, being able to be independent throughout the day. Washroom routines. So when we're talking about washroom routines, we're hoping that when your child starts kindergarten, I mean, preschool is a little bit different, but when your child is starting kindergarten, we're hoping that they're not in any diapers or any pull-ups. Here in Ontario, like teachers cannot, like an actual teacher cannot assist a child in the washroom. So you wanna make sure your child is as independent as possible. And so I think that I'm one of these people who's fallen into this trap before where you're like, oh, my kid tells me they need to go to the washroom. We run there together, the kid goes to the washroom, you come back out. You going with them to the washroom and even just standing there or even just asking them if they have to go to the washroom is you know assisting them in a way. You wanna make them as independent as you can. And so over these next couple of weeks before school starts, maybe we stop asking them. Now, if you're like me and you're about to go on a long outing or car ride, I would ask my kids like, oh guys, run to the bathroom before we go because we're not gonna be able to stop for a little bit. Giving them that independence so that they know or they learn how to you know, pull down their clothes themselves, how they clean themselves properly, pull their clothes back on, like, you know, without their underwear getting all bunched up and whatever, teach them little tricks, like, you know, like the thumb around the elastic band of the underwear so it's on properly teach them how to properly wash their hands, how do they turn off the water, help them identify hot and cold on the tap. If your child has an accident, the teachers are really used to it, it's not a big deal. I pack extra clothes in my child's backpack and everything is labeled. So like everything from underwear to socks, to t-shirts, to pants, shorts, whatever they need. So that leads me to my second area of independence, which is dressing and undressing. So when we think about dressing and undressing. Let's start with the, you know, like basic clothing because we're just finished talking about like washroom routines. Having your child be able to like change their clothes, like all their clothes, like underwear, pants, shirts, socks, shoes, if they have an accident. And so having your child practice, put on their clothes every single day independently without help, like until they really need it. But for me, I found my biggest fault was rushing. I'm always in a rush. So if my child doesn't want to do it, I end up doing it. And so again, discipline as a parent to say, here you go, you've got plenty of time. And you know, if you don't do it, we're not going to X, Y, Z, right? So if they don't get dressed. And so if they're giving an honest effort and they need help, go in and help them at the end, that's fine. But giving them a chance to be independent with dressing and undressing. And so dressing and undressing becomes even more complicated in the winter season here in Toronto, especially like the snow is out of control they're gonna have snow pants hats boots so in the fall time I would start practicing that with them so when they start school in September you know they should be able to put their jacket on and off and their shoes on and off because they will be switching from indoor to outdoor shoes but the winter stuff I would you know in October start practicing that gear because that takes a long time to put on teachers have like 20 to 30 kids in their class they can't be putting on snow pants and boots and hats and gloves for all the students so trying to get them as independent as you possibly can with those routines it's so important for them to be able to do that 
and not miss out on outdoor time because like for example they couldn't get their shoe on or whatever so that is something i think we should really really be focusing on in preparing our kids for school and also limit buttons and zippers like on pants like like don't send them in jeans like if they're if they're jeans make them stretchy jeans that you pull on and off limit the amount of zippers and buttons that the kids have to put on and off they're small it's hard for them um, and it's just making it complicated for everyone so pull on pants comfortable clothes track pants shorts like anything you can pull on is great for kids and when it comes to shoes velcro it has to be velcro in fact my kids schools actually said we don't want you to send anything other than Velcro or slip-on shoes. And as you get to the older grades, you'll discover if your kids still don't know how to tie their laces, there's limited options in Velcro shoes. And another little tip I have is if your child has challenges sort of figuring out the right feet for their shoes, you can get some special stickers made that have their name on them or like a picture, like it's a picture of a heart. And the heart, like half of the sticker goes in one shoe and half the sticker goes in the other shoe. And so tell the kids that they have to make the heart. And once they make the car heart, the shoes are together, they're on the right side of the feet. So little tips like that that I've learned over time that I realized are simple, that helps your kids learn the right way to put their shoes on. And finally, if there's a piece of clothing that you know your child is struggling with, like let's say come winter time, there's a pair of boots, this happened with one of my kids, there's a pair of boots, technically it's their right size, but they just have a really hard time putting them on, get rid of them donate them, save them for later, use them at home, keep them as an extra pair, get them a pair of boots that they actually can put on. So I find that's very, very frustrating sometimes as a parent where you buy something, it fits them, they've tried it on, but once you get home, you realize like taking it on and off is really hard for them, um, especially with all their snow gear on and stuff like that. Just, just pick something else and save that for home. And finally, feeding. Feeding is another area of independence that I feel like I need a lot of discipline to implement in, in my house. I'm the type of parent who like sometimes feeds my kids because we're getting late or they're having a hard time with something and I'm not giving them enough time to practice learning to eat that on their own. We eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner around the same time frame. We need to let kids be able to identify and feel those hunger cues for themselves because here in kindergarten in Ontario, there's no set lunch time, right? Like there's a table they can go to and pull up their snacks and lunch and eat when they want. And I actually think that's a good way for them to learn, like, okay, I'm hungry, um, and, and what do I do when I'm hungry? And then open up their lunch container. So again, breaking down the task. Feeding yourself is not just, can you put spoon to mouth? It is, can, when it comes to school, can you open your lunch container? Can you unzip it? Can you open up the container that your food is in? Can you open that cheese string package? Can you, again, use a spoon? Can you scoop things out of a thermos if they're hot? how big do the pieces of food need to be for your child to be successful to eat them. So I know with one of my kids, he loves to shove like huge amounts of food in his mouth. And so when I cut things like apples or carrots, I cut everything really small and I limit the quantity that I'm giving him. So just that he's safe, there's no choking hazards. It's just put foods in small bite-sized pieces for them. Again, we're talking kindergarten here. Small bite-sized pieces for them. Give them the foods that they love. Make sure there's healthy options in there, especially at the beginning of the school year. Don't be giving them like all kinds of fruits and veggies that you know they don't like. Like throw some in there, but not everything. Like make sure the lunch includes things that they like. So if they are hungry, which they will be hungry eventually, they will eat something. And on that note, don't be concerned if your child is not eating that much the first couple of days. It's a transitional period. Just keep sending the food that they love. Again, bite-sized bite -size portions in little containers. I find sometimes a lot of small snacks uh, works better. Like sometimes kids don't want a huge serving of one thing like we would do at home, like your main meal and sides. Maybe at school they want, you know, a little bit of like, you know, a couple of pieces of pasta and they want like, you know, a little bit of, you know, corn or they want a little bit of apple or whatever. I find bento boxes work really well with uh, kids also, but just with the kindergarten kids, one huge bento box, I'm not sure how that's gonna work. I would find like, smaller containers that they can open and close on their own might work better. On that note, it does get hot in the schools. A lot of the schools don't have air conditioning. Get a little ice pack, you can throw that in there um, to keep some things cold like yogurt and things like that. And don't forget the options that you have for things like yogurt, for example. Not everything has to be spoon to mouth if they have a hard time with a spoon, right? Like there's like yogurt tubes, there's drinkable yogurt. So how I prepare for independence with feeding during the summer months is I actually pack my kids a lunch. Like I pack them a lunch in the containers that I intend to give them and I give it to them. Unzip your lunch box, open up the container, try things, see what they eat. It's a great trial run for you to be able to, one, see if they can even open those containers 
especially for the youngins, three and four years old, five years old, they can't open all the containers. So it's a good um, experiment and trial and error process to see, can they open it, can they not? Do I need to try something different? What are they eating in that lunch? What are they not eating? It's just a great way to get them to practice so that when they get to school, it's not new. Like, oh, my lunch is in this container. What is this? I've never had this before. It sounds really simple and I didn't think about it until I became a parent, but getting your kids to practice lunch is actually a really great idea. So I would highly recommend that you do that. So those are the three areas where I feel like if you can get your child as independent as possible, it will lead to an easier transition to school come September. Now, another bonus tip I have for you. So I know I said you don't need to know the alphabet and all those kinds of things. Those things are a bonus. But I will say, if you can get your child to identify their name, it would be really helpful. So ways I would get my kids to do that is like get like a little magnetic board or something, put out, you know, the letters and be like, oh, this is your name. The reason why that's helpful is because when they have cubbies, when they have labels on things that their teachers are going to put out or notebooks or, you know, their, their water cup or whatever, there's a chance that kids might have the same water cup in the class. You don't know, right? So just for them to be able to identify their name, like, okay, looking at it, like this is my name, that can be really helpful and it really helps out the teachers too, I think, um, if a child can identify their name. So that is one bonus thing I would say that if you can get your child to do that, it would really help. So guys, those are my tips to getting your kids as independent as possible in school. If you guys wanna hear more tips about the transition to school, about gaining independence in any of these routines, please let me know in the comments down below. I would love to share more information on this if it's something you guys are interested in. So if you haven't already, I would love it if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I do a whole bunch of different things on this channel from sharing marriage advice, family vlogs, talking about being a first generation Canadian, and all kinds of mom life, parent life kind of things. So as always, I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more videos, and follow me on my daily vlogs. March on, Marmee.